I've got my first cup of coffee ready for the morning and my morning cat is sitting here waiting for attention so she's probably going to jump on the table anytime soon. Good morning, good day or good evening wherever you are. This is JP here and in this video I want to look at the info box from Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg. Many of you probably only use page builders but if you're like me you still revert back to the WordPress editor often when you are working with a blog because blogs are just so inherent to WordPress that it's so much easier sometimes to do that. Especially if you are working on a free site that you are making for someone else, that WordPress editor still needs to do the job for you. And with the ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg, you can do that for free. It is a free plugin. You go to the WordPress repository, Gutenberg Blocks, ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg. You install it and you activate it and it's ready to go within your WordPress editor. On my site here, let's go and see where we can use this. Look for my blog and let's choose a blog, Daily Make Tips. Let's see if this one. And here is an ideal area where the info box can do a spectacular facelift for my page. So I'll click here on Edit Post. And within the WordPress editor over here, let's see what I've got here. I can add the blog. Let me just close this out. So wherever I can add the block, I'll just click here, add block, and then you collapse it. Look here at the bottom, ultimate add-ons blocks. It keeps changing. You see it's UG, which is ultimate Gutenberg, then it's ultimate add-ons blocks. And when you search for it's ultimate add-ons for, ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg, it, it gets a little bit tricky. The first one is very popular, info box, select this. The info box combines a number of elements into one nice cohesive looking block. And it's really, I, I think if you master this, you're going to use it most of the time. It's perfect for headings, it's perfect for sections, and it's just perfect for, well, most of the cases I can think of. If you go up here, the first area is your alignment. So here you have alignment to the left and to the right. And then we had it at center, which it comes in my default. In this case, I'm going to put it to the left. And what we've got here is an icon. We've got text here, upper title. Then we've got our main title. We've got a divider, a separator, and then we've got our content over here. And all of this is controlled in the options on the sidebar. If I go here to the sidebar and I collapse here, you will see image, content, separator, there's a call to action, spacing, and advanced. We don't cover the advanced because usually that just includes your CSS. But if we go and look at the image icon, let me begin showing you what you can do here. So you can change this icon, the position where it should be within this block. Right off the title, you can put it left, and you can put it on the right. And you can even decide here how you want to stack it from tablet to mobile. So I'll leave it there on tablet. What I'll do, I'll put it here, left of text of title. When you're working with the icon, you have additional options. Like here, I can put it now in the middle of this box. I can choose other icons from here. I can change the size and the color as well. I'm going to change this to an image. So image, and then I go to here. Select image, grab an image. Look at that, that's too big. So I'll go down here where the options for the image have appeared now. With the width, I'll make it a little bit smaller. And then let's put it to the top. Let's make it a little bit bigger again. And now it's starting to look quite professional in my opinion. So let's go to the next part. Here is your prefix. And I can say something latest fashion. Now for your prefix, your title and your content, if I collapse everything here, that's under content. So you have prefix, title, and topography. And you see that you have the option to deactivate that. So if you just want to have a header, you can disable the prefix and you can disable the description. Look at that. Looks pretty cool. Let's leave it on so you can have an idea of how all of this will play together. But I'm not going to make changes here. I'm not going to change any text. You have full control over topography here. You can go and change the fonts, the line heights, and everything, as well as the color changes that you are used to. You can collapse that. Then the separator over here, you can put it off the title, and you again have this control 
over where you want to place it. I'll put it again off the title. You have control over how it looks in the styling and the color. One that is not currently displayed is the call to action. By clicking on this, you have three options, the text button or the complete box. Now text is just a button without borders. I click here on button. And if I set it on complete box, the entire box will become clickable on the front end. I'm going to put it on button. Let's style it a little bit. Let's say we want to put the button in that green. I'll go grab the green. So let's copy that. And then we go down here where the color is for the button. And then I'll paste that code. Then we need to change our border. Let's put that on white. That's our text. And over here, our border. Let's do that. Don't really need the border. We can remove that if we want to. We give it some rounded corners here by dragging up to the rounded corners to about 50. And then let's give it a little bit more room to breathe here, adding padding at the top and the bottom and also on the sides. Now the button looks much better and you have all the other options here. Open a new window and you enter the URL over here. You can also add an icon here if you wanted to add an icon to it. And then you have the option of before or after text and the spacing between the text and the icon. Let's just go and change the hover color because we need to have something there to hover over. So for the hover, I'll only put in text. and I'll add that color that I've selected. Let's see, that looks good. And maybe we also have to change the border for the hover. Let's see, ah, that's looking good. Let's collapse this. This is our call to action. And the last part is going to be the spacing. I like this. This is simplicity for me. And I love that I don't have to think too much about it. So here I have the spacing, the margin at the end of the prefix. So look here as I increase that or at the bottom of the title and I'll add some space there. Then at the bottom of the separator, add there, and then at the bottom of the description. So this way I can build out some space between these elements. I also have, once I bring in that icon over there or the image, I also have control over that. So I can drag all my content a little bit to the right and I can bring my image and icon down a little bit. Like there. Nice. Let's update that. Let's go preview it on the front. And what a nice section. I will remove this probably or try and make it fit in with that or bring it into the description. Let's see if that work. Update that. We go to the front end and nicely built out. Good job. I really enjoyed working with the info box and there's so much you can do. These info boxes that are very popular, but you can go all the way making these nice looking images info boxes with captions and more details at the bottom. All of this is free and you should consider exploring it a little bit. Even if you are a huge page builder user, this is a very nice add on for the Gutenberg editor within WordPress. This is JB. See you in the next video.